Hello and welcome to summer semester. This is history 2111 US history 1 and I'm Mr. Kennedy. I'm the instructor for the class and this video is just an introduction since we can't meet in person. We're 100% online. I want to take a minute to give you an overview of what to expect, what's going to happen and what we're going to be covering in the class. Now this is our home page, so this is what you'll see. And when you click on lessons, you may notice there's nothing here. It's because you have to complete the course agreement form first. Now if you've been a West Georgia Tech student before, you know that every class has this. If you have not been a West Georgia Tech student before, uh, there's a form you have to complete before you can see anything in Blackboard. And that form is located underneath the syllabus tab right here. And it's this very first option. It says course agreement form. Now, when you do the course agreement form, it's just going to ask you a couple of really easy questions. First of all, have you read over the syllabus and read the syllabus? Uh, you're going to say agree because we're going to go over the syllabus right now. Academic misconduct, make sure you read this link so that you know what your expectations are according to the college. And academic integrity, uh, you have to do your own work, you have to give credit to sources, everything you do must be original. And then last but not least, you can only use resources that are approved by your professor or instructor. Once you have agreed to all of those, You can submit your course agreement form. And then when you click the lessons, you'll now see this new folder called lessons. This lessons folder is going to be the business area of the class. This is where everything is kept. Uh, there's a Q&A section where you can ask questions of your fellow students. There's a Chicago style information and discussion rubric. In history, we use a notation style called Chicago or Turabian. Uh, you're probably more familiar with MLA or APA. Uh, Chicago slash Turabian is used for anthropology, history, criminology, things like that. So that's what we're going to use in this course. If you've never seen Chicago style before, I've got a quick guide here. There's a way to evaluate your sources. There's a style guide to help you with how it should look. And there's the Purdue Owl Chicago Manual of Style. The Purdue Owl is the best website for paper writing, whether you're doing an MLA paper, APA paper, Chicago paper, other forms of papers that we don't even need to deal with. The Purdue Owl by Purdue University is the best resource for that. The American Yawp. This is the textbook for the class. And because we are US History 1, we're going to worry about this left hand column. These are the 15 chapters for this class right here. And each of these you can click on. So, for example, if we were doing the American Revolution, this is the American Revolution chapter. It's fairly readable. A couple of pictures here and there. Um, it's free, which is obviously a good thing. So you don't have to worry about buying a textbook. There are some assignments called reflection papers. There are three of them. Uh, nobody likes doing a paper, especially in the summer. But don't worry. These reflection papers are actually opinion-based papers. There are several readings you're going to have to do throughout the class. And these readings are going to be where the reflection papers come from. And when you do these readings, you're going to read it for content, of course. And then you're going to give your thoughts, your opinions, your ideas on it. Do you like the reading? Do you hate the reading? And why you feel the way you do about it. Now, there's only one reflection paper drop box open at a time. That's to make sure that you don't accidentally submit it to the wrong place. So the reflection paper one drop box is open until the due date. 
When the due date passes, this box will close and the second one will appear. Another thing you have to do for this class is go to a museum. And I know for a lot of people, museum is a bad word. It's a, a foreign word even, but I promise going to a museum, it, it won't kill you. And sometimes they're even free. And sometimes people even like it. So don't think it's gonna be boring. Uh, the museum review, it can be turned in any time of the semester. It can be turned in the very first day of the class and it can be turned in all the way up until July 26th at 11.59 p.m. So there's plenty of time to pick a day, go to the museum with your family or friends or just by yourself. And I have a whole list of museums here that you can check out. Uh, each one of these is going to be a clickable link. And when you click on the link, it will open up the website to that museum. And the reason I do that is so that you can take a minute to look at the museum, find out if it's the right museum you want to go to or if you want to pick a different one. Uh, the Andersonville site is pretty good, but it's in Southwest Georgia, so it's a little bit of a drive. Not only that, but I've also gone through and I have found the price of all the different museums. Some of them, if you have your student ID, you save some money. Others, like the Chief Van Historical Site, are free if you get the park pass from the public library. Now, if you don't have a student ID, you can go to any one of the West Georgia Tech library locations and get it there. Or if you don't have a Georgia park pass, then you can check them out from whatever your public library may be. But there's a whole list of museums. There's something in there for just about everyone. There's a short research paper you have to do. And research is another one of those dirty words goes along with museum. Uh, with research paper, uh, it's just going to be on something you're interested in that we're going to talk about in this class. So if you're interested in George Washington or Thomas Jefferson, you can do a paper on them. If you're interested in Abraham Lincoln or, you know, Eli Whitney's cotton gin, you can do a research paper on that. For the summer, it's fairly low key. Um, it's just important to do it because it is 10% of your grade. Now, as far as the actual weekly work, I have the class broken up into weeks like this here. And each of these folders tells you uh, how long the week lasts the work you have to do during that week, and also the due date. I try to make it as easy to see as possible. And then within each week, you've got the two different lessons. Now, because it is a summer class, it's a little more compressed. That means that there's gonna be two lessons per week, and I'm going to be putting up and making for you two video lectures per week, uh, since we can't meet in person. Um, yes, there's PowerPoint, in here, this before first contact PowerPoint is one I've created, but the video lecture I create will kind of explain what the PowerPoint slides mean. So that's why I do that. And every single lesson folder is set up the same. You've got at the top the link to the individual chapter. So that takes you straight to chapter one, and then you can read it. These are the terms you should know after reading the chapter. There are the readings here for this first week, or this first lesson, I should say. There are four readings right here. They're all pretty easy. For example, I'll open up Asian Origins of Native American Dogs, and you can see it is literally a magazine article about dogs. There's videos. These videos are usually 10 minutes long or so. They are crash course videos. And crash course, very easy to understand, a lot of information packed in just 10 or 15 minutes and they're narrated and hosted by a very famous author named John Green. And this is just to reinforce 
the information from the lectures and the information from the book since once again we can't meet in person. You have a discussion question for each of these and there's also a quiz as well. Now your chapter one discussion is based on the primary source readings. So when you click chapter one discussion, you have four questions. One's on the, the first article, one's on the second article, third article, and fourth article. The quiz, the quiz is based on the textbook. So you'll read the chapter in the textbook and then you'll take the quiz. And then the videos, once again, that's just for extra knowledge to make sure if you have any questions about anything that you can go through and you can watch the video and maybe get a better understanding. And as I said, each week is set up the same. Chapter two, textbook, the terms you should know, the PowerPoint, and then eventually the lecture video, the optional videos you can watch to help you understand, the required readings for lesson two, there are only two of them, Chapter two discussion goes with the readings. Chapter two quiz goes with the videos. All right, let's look at the syllabus real quick. The syllabus is right here. And here we go. This is the syllabus for our class. This is kind of a contract between yourself and myself. It's a History 2111, U.S. History 1 to 1877, we're basically going to go through Reconstruction, which is what happens after the Civil War. And we are a completely online class, so everything we do will be on the internet. As you see here, our weekly schedule, we meet online. You see here my name, my email address, and I have an office on the Carroll campus. Uh, you're welcome to stop by the Carroll campus if you would like to. I do enjoy visitors. Uh, it gets kind of lonely here sometimes. So if you're in the area, I am available in my office on Mondays, 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. and Wednesdays, 10 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. Other than that, email. Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, after 10 p.m. I probably won't answer and it's very unlikely I will answer on Sundays. Now, what are we doing in this class? This is a study of U.S. history from colonization up until the Civil War ends. And we'll cover the American Revolution, the building of America, the falling part of America and then the reconstruction of it. The textbook, once again, is free. It's called the American Yop. There's yet another way to access the textbook. This is a link to all the policies and procedures that West Georgia Technical College has. I do suggest that you take a look at these if you get a couple of moments. There is course attendance and you might be asking, how do you take attendance with an online class? Well, what I typically do is if you do some of the work each week, you get points for attendance. If you miss everything, then you are counted absent. So make sure you do your work each week. It is graded. It's 5% of your grade. And honestly, it's probably the absolute easiest 5% to get just because all you have to do is turn in your work. Below that, you see something on plagiarism. Unfortunately, every semester we have to talk about plagiarism and just put it this way, plagiarism is bad. Um, you always need to do your own work. You need to give credit where credit is due. You cannot do intellectual st stealing or theft, which is what plagiarism is. Now, if you are caught plagiarizing uh, your first time, that is a zero for that assignment. And if you're caught two or more times, then I have to submit you to the Dean of Students for possible punishment. Now, it is my absolute hope and goal that that doesn't happen to anybody this semester. So 
please, please, please make sure all the work you do is your own. Grading, uh, two exams, midterm exam and final exam, 20 and 20 for a total of 40. The three reflection papers put together equal 20%. So, you know, 20 divided by three equals whatever uh, each individual assignment is worth. The museum review I told you about is 10%. The activities, that is completing your discussion and your quiz, that's 15%. Research essay is 10% and then participation, that's the attendance, just doing your work is 5%. The exams are not cumulative, they're going to be primarily multiple choice since we have a short semester and there could be a short answer question or a short essay question on there as well. Reflection papers, there's a total of three of them. The reflection paper should focus on one of the assigned readings found within the Blackboard Lessons folders. Please use your first paragraph to quickly summarize the article you've chosen to reflect on. For the remainder of the paper, please give your thoughts, opinions, or ideas. Now, the best reflection papers are one and a half to two pages long, provide a clear opinion or idea, and it's convincing as to why you feel the way you do. So in short, page and a half to two pages double spaced. Your first paragraph and only your first paragraph should be a quick summary of which article you're writing on and the rest of it. Tell me what you think about what you read. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Why did you like it? Why did you hate it? Etc. Etc. Museum exhibit review. Students are expected to visit one of the following history museums and then write a two and a half to three page double spaced review of the museum. Your first page should include your thoughts and opinions of the museum review similar to a reflection paper. The remainder should be a historical critique of the museum. Uh, to do this, please consider questions such as the following. Number one, does the museum explain the, at, the exhibits adequately? Number two, does the layout of the museum make sense? Number three, is there something the museum does exceedingly well? And number four, is there something the museum needs to improve on? Uh, you're not limited to those questions, that's just to get you started. Now you may wonder, why do I have you doing the museum exhibit review? Why do I have you doing these reflection papers? Um, a lot of people are like, this doesn't matter to me. But in reality, it does. Because what it's designed to do is to, to get you thinking critically, to get you outside your comfort zone, uh, to get you to voice your opinion, to analyze. Those are all things, believe it or not, that you will do in the real world when you get a job or maybe if you are already employed, there are things you already do. So I want you guys to be able to think for yourselves. I want you guys to be able to creatively write. I want you guys to know a little bit about research. Uh, these are all real world skills that can be used um, both in your further education or in your professional life. Here's a list again of all the museums that are available to you with prices and, and um, everything. Activities include any assigned quizzes, assigned discussion boards, and in-class participation. Research, research essay, you must complete an original four to six page research essay based on a topic of your choice that we will cover in this course. So once again, if you're interested in Benjamin Franklin, do a research paper on him. If you're interested in the invention of the railroad, that's something you could do and a research essay on as well. This is a rubric that gives you an idea of what I'm looking for. So you have to do a little bit of research using the West Georgia Tech Library. Attendance is 5% of your grade and then extra credit. Yes, extra credit. Uh, if you go to a second museum and you complete a second museum review, I'll give you two points on your final grade. Then here is your course schedule. I also put this on the course calendar so you can check it there. But uh, this way you can keep track of what we're doing each week. So for this first week, from June 1st to June 7th, it's chapters one and two or lessons one and two. There's the name of the topic and then all the assignments that are due. So this first week, you have to do your student introduction. You have to do the course agreement form both discussion forms, both chapter quizzes. And then all through 
the semester until we get to the end. Now the midterm exam, by the way, is going to be proctored. You're going to have to do that uh, a special way, uh, usually using what we call the lockdown browser, or you can do it in person here with somebody watching you. Um, that'll be up to you, but more information will come out on that in a week or two. All right, if you have any questions, um, first of all, make sure you look through Blackboard and you understand everything. Make sure you look at the syllabus and you understand everything. If you have any questions, either call me, text me, or call me, email me, um, stop by the office if you get a chance, and we can talk, and I'll help you in any way I can. But it's pretty straightforward. Just make sure uh, the number one thing I can recommend to you, and I recommend this to anybody taking an online class, is to treat this like it was a sit-down in-person class. And what I mean by that is make sure you do your work for this class at the same time every week. That way you know you won't forget. So it could even be 1.30 a.m. to 2.15 a.m. If you keep that every single week at Monday, 1.30 a.m., and you just get your work done at that time each week, then it will become habitual, it will become regular, and you will succeed. All right, 20 minutes of your time, that's enough. I have to go and record your video lectures now. Uh, I look forward to a good semester with you, and I wish all of you good luck as well. We'll see you soon. Bye.